here in Ettrick, Wisconsin at Marvin Janice's farm. Marvin Janice are our friends that we met while uh, we came through Wisconsin on our first trip across the country. Our idealistic view was that we'd have five to six weeks to work on this, but in reality we had two and a half. <laughs> so on the average day we wake up around sunrise and uh, after breakfast we typically have our meeting where we lay out the tasks that need to be done today. So from there on out it's basically just work, work, work until the sun goes down. What's up, E? It's excellent, sir. And in that two and a half weeks, we had to design and engineer a new vegetable oil kit. We had to remove all the bus seats and build a new interior. We had to build a safari rack on the roof. We had to paint the bus so it looked like a bio tour bus. Inside and out, plus wire the whole thing for electricity. We had to weld a vegetable oil storage and filtration system underneath the bus. Oh, and we also had to clean and feed ourselves. <laughs> Occasionally. Occasionally. <laughs> One of my first three scattering adventures with Tavi. We also sucked up a, uh, a condom into the pump, which clogged it, which is gross. So we get that out, and then we uh, broke apart a spaghetti strainer, little metal screen thing and tied that around the end of the hose and like we made a great evolutionary leap in the world of Greece. We had some visitors that helped us out. Uh, Star and Tim, two MIT people we met on various occasions across the country who wanted to lend their engineering, welding, and electrical skills to help us build this bus. Adam, what are you cutting, man? I am cutting a 40-inch piece for the bunk bed in the back. And it's gonna be awesome. Nice. Where he'll try to sleep while the bus moves. <laughs> It'll be a fun time. How long ago did you get here? I just got here about two hours ago. Two hours right ago. Right to work. And what's your first project? <laughs> Building a bunk. In the back of a school bus. Back of the school bus. I picked up Adam at the airport. He flew in after just finishing AmeriCorps. Immediately, I realized he had a solid understanding of the issues, and he had been building houses for the past year, and we knew he'd be a great biotour crew member. The idea of the bunk bed came about because when we visited Keith at Fullerton College, he was like, why don't these guys have a bunk bed? <laughs> so, yeah, Keith saw our bus and he saw potential to build a bunk bed. And Keith also came up with the idea when he was looking at the bus seats that we'd removed, he saw that they kind of fit into the ceiling. And he started grinding the legs off one of them and riveted one in, and it made this really great luggage rack. So we put those all down one side. Jeremy came up with this uh, clever idea for a bench on the other side that had storage. Right. Now for the moment of truth. This is the moment when we find out whether I'm a moron or a genius. Nothing in between. Well, clearly I'm a genius. And between Fernando, Jeremy, and Keith, they managed to construct the whole table that folds into a bed. How does it work? What does it do? Uh, Fernando welded the roof rack. We're going to watch this video later and then evaluate your efficiency so we can come up with a good hourly wage. Oh, really? <clears throat> my performance? Yeah, but because we don't have any money to pay you a wage, it's going to determine your food rations. <laughs> <laughs> Is Fernando using his calories of energy wisely? How can he improve on that? Well, don't... So far, I am beating Alan. Uh, Ethan. <laughs> And uh, Keith and Ethan were spent a lot of their time underneath the bus. And Maggie painted this ceiling, this lovely uh, sky blue. And she was also a big part in painting the exterior of the bus and priming it and prepping it and all that. Yeah, and we found time to, you know, have some fun in between. At night, we'll occasionally, you know, we'll watch a movie on the projector on the side of the barn. Uh, and then Maggie and I oftentimes just pulled mattresses onto the roof of the bus so we could sleep under the stars. I have my first impression of Maggie though, was that she was she was very grounded and um, able to deal with uh, the instability that's inherent in bus life. And also, uh, I knew that she worked on a ship, and so I wanted help with tying things down on the roof of the bus. My first impression of Keith was 
it might be difficult to work with this man, but we quickly learned that once I learned a sense of humor, it became a lot easier and we worked well together. Keith bitches a lot. He just is constantly complaining, but he's joking almost all the time. Um, and so once you realize that, it becomes very hilarious, and he's like a very sprightly, lighthearted fellow. Most of the time. And he's good at fixing things. Um, for the most part, it was, uh, it was much of the orc side of our plork balance. Out of context, no one will understand that. That's okay. Plork. It's the harmonious balance of play and work that we all strive to achieve. There we go, the context that we needed. Yay. With the new bus almost fully assembled and our whole crew almost there, we gather on top of this hill one last time in Wisconsin. Gonna head west tonight, across the country once again, and the tour begins.